A year ago, at age 40, I decided to find out if I still had it after 20 years of being a tennis coach instead of being a tennis player. It was a lot harder than I expected, and in this video, you're gonna learn from my mistakes so you don't repeat them, and instead, play your best tennis no matter how old you are. Because here's the thing, you love tennis too much to have it bring you pain and failure instead of joy and success. So back to my mistakes. Basically, my strategy was to jump into the deepest part of the pool and challenge myself as hard and as fast as possible so I could make up for lost time. I started working out, set up matches against some of the strongest players I knew, and hired a high-performance coach to kick my butt like I was a college kid. Boy, was that dumb. I pulled my back, got a terrible crick in my neck, and just five weeks after starting my comeback, this happened. Go down, go down. It took four months to rehab that injury, which was plenty of time to sit and think about things. If I'm hurting this much, this often, at 40 years old, how in the world am I still going to be able to enjoy the game at 50, 60, or 70? After all, that's the goal, right? I've always dreamed of playing tennis right up until the day I could no longer walk, but never considered it might actually be tennis that would stop me from walking only in my 40s. Tell me down in the comments if you can relate. Needless to say, that thought kind of freaked me out, so I decided to reach out to everyone I knew who had been where I was and not only survived their 40s playing competitive tennis, but thrived well into their 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond. I spent weeks setting up and recording interviews with some of the most successful national and international adult competitors of all time to find out what their secrets were. Players like Jimmy Parker, who has won a record 151 national championships and has had a number one national ranking in every age group from the 35s to the 75s. Phil Landauer, who's won 41 national titles and runs the Senior Excellence Tennis Camps in Naples, Florida, focusing exclusively on playing great tennis at any age. And Scott Brody, who's been to 5.0 nationals and open level nationals several times. What's really incredible about the accomplishments of these players is that they pulled them off and continue to pull them off in spite of their own long list of injuries. Over the years, they've learned how to take great care of themselves and bounce back as quickly as possible. Needless to say, it was a huge honor to be able to pick the brains of all these legends and find out how they've been able to maintain such a high level of training, practice, and play over decades and decades of pushing themselves. Here's some of the insights they revealed during our conversations. My wife and I and, and Mark Vines, who helps us with the set camps, we're all believers that um, you can continue as you get older in life becoming a better tennis player. You may not get faster, you may not get stronger, you may not uh, jump as high, but you can play smarter tennis and you can become a much better tennis player. We've had all sorts of people that we've worked with that were not junior players, they didn't play college tennis. And they initially said, you know, I didn't play when I was a kid, I'm 55 years old, I am what I am. Well, we've seen it uh, differently over the years. And if you want to put the time and effort into it, you can get better and you can compete. And as you get older, those scales that people when you were 30 um, that used to beat you easily well, things change. They they, mm. they they slow down a little bit. You improve. Um, there's there's a lot. The, the the scales even out over time. A key thing to remember as you get older is who to compare yourself to. A theme I heard from the legends over and over was the idea of not comparing yourself to who you used to be 20 or 30 years ago, but instead to compare yourself to your peers, the ones who are your own age and competing at your own level. Most tennis players, as they age, do less and less to manage and maintain their body, which leaves the door wide open for you to edge them out, just like Phil is describing. I, I, my, my game just evolves from out of, out of necessity, you know, and it's, it took 40 years. You know, that you can do that with a pro or with a camera and viewing yourself. You can, that if you have a critical eye and, and, and film yourself, you can, you can see things that you're doing that are obviously wrong. But have, have, a, have a critical eye. If it's not yours, have, have it be somebody else's. That's the sort of thing I think that will make your improvement curve really steep, even at, at you know, 50. 
60, whatever, you know, that if you want to get better, um, don't be afraid to put yourself under the microscope and, and actually see what you're doing. Scott's example is so inspiring because he revealed to me for the first time in our talk together that he's never taken a lesson in his life. He's self-guiding himself over the span of 40 years to being a national level competitor and is setting himself up with the game and body to be really, really successful as he enters his 60s and beyond. He's living proof that with the right focus and dedication, anybody can improve at any age. You know, what are we doing here? Well, don't, don't we want to lead a happy life? I mean, isn't that part of the challenge? And so tennis to me has just been a gift because it, it fills so many squares. You know, it's like you, by being a tennis player, you almost are led to lead a, a relatively healthy lifestyle. I think any sport, any endeavor that you engage yourself in that, that pulls on a lot of the uh, facets of you as a human is a good thing. And the more the better in tennis really has a lot of different facets to uh, you. I mean, you've broken it down into these areas of, you know, what kind of mental adjustments, what kind of physical, adjustments, what kind of dietary adjustments, what do you do about it? All those things are, are part of the human condition. <laughs> and uh, I never would have thought about it this way when I was younger, but tennis really has um, provided me a, a way of living that has suited me. And I felt so fortunate because I, you know, I have friends that are not tennis players and they retire and they, they don't know what to do with themselves. No. You know, well, should I take up golf? Uh, well, you know, and it's never quite as fulfilling as when they were really engaged. Mm. And so the guys that I'm buddies with on the senior tennis tour, we're all engaged. <laughs> We're all trying to make ourselves better. Even after 151 national titles, Jimmy is still working hard to improve and be the best he can be as he closes out his 70s and moves into the 80s division next year. And I love hearing how much better his life is for him because of the effort he puts into his game. The Legends revealed so many practical ideas that I can put into action immediately to help me move towards my best tennis today, tomorrow, and for the next 40 years to come. Now I have a concrete plan of attack, and I know so many other tennis players need one too. So I gathered everything I've learned over the last few years of trial and error and combined it with the full Legend interviews into an online system called Timeless Tennis. Go to www.timelesstennistraining.com now for full details so you can feel your best and play your best no matter what your age.